here. <laughs> it's Mr. Red here on a chilly Monday. Uh, today is March 11th, 2024. And I have been looking forward to this day now since beginning of Jan uh, February uh, because this is the day that I will actually start, finally start, to get out and begin splitting our hives. Now, why, why would even someone consider, why would a beekeeper even consider wanting to split their hives? Well, basically, if you don't want your bees to swarm off and, and leave, splitting a hive is a good way to um, prevent that. Uh, personally for me, I, I keep bees so that I can get honey from them and by splitting hives I'm able to achieve that, that goal. So you, you don't have to split. If you don't want to split your bees, you don't have to. You can go ahead and let them swarm and just do their thing. I mean, after all, I been I kept bees that way for years and years. I never split hives. But once I I wanted to really start getting honey, I uh, I found out that I need to learn how to make splits. And there's a number of ways of making splits. <laughs> Literally dozens of different ways to making splits. And I believe that the method that I'll show in this video which is using a double screen dividing board to make a split is probably the easiest um, way that a beginning, particularly a beginning beekeeper, can do to make a split successfully. It's very simple. <laughs> you don't have to know much about keeping bees to do it and it really really does work so that's what the video is going to be about making our splits but prior to making um, the splits I have been very busy this morning it is chilly it's early right about seven o'clock 7 15 and it's 45 degrees it's chilly this morning and in a way that's a good thing for me because we've got she was all of our bee yards. We've got 150 hives that we've got to go through to, to check. And as late as it is in the year, like I said, it's March 11th. Usually last year I was finished doing our splits at this time. But this year, <laughs> because I was busy going around making speeches, I went to uh, St. Louis, Tulsa, and last weekend it was in North Carolina, New Bern, North Carolina. And because of those prior arrangements, I was unable to do my splits. But before I left to go to North Carolina, I went and I opened a few of our hives here at the Abbey. And, oh my gosh, these, the hives are just busting at the seams. Eight frames of bees. I saw uh, queen cells being formed, uh, swarm cells uh, that, that had uh, royal jelly in them. So I know here I am three days after after that I know that we go into our boxes uh, they are going to be ready for uh, us to make splits either uh, using our, uh, swarm cells or the double screen dividing boards. So just about at the honey house and I'm going to show you what I've been doing in preparation uh, to make the splits and, and getting all of our equipment ready. And by the grace of God, you hear the bells ringing. <laughs> Today, and the next, over the next couple days, me and good time Charlie and maybe even a couple other people are going to go through all of our hives, uh, doing our splits, and I'll be bringing you right along with me. Now let me show you <laughs> what I've been doing. Oh my gosh, I have been in here over the last three weeks doing this stuff, getting ready. I have gotten all of my um, telescoping covers, my bottom boards and my inner covers, all of these 
stacks or the pieces of the hive that I need to, to do the split after I do it. Um, I've got those. I still have to go through uh, that little stack right there and put all these things together, a little bit of cleaning. And then we have been going through boxes, cleaning our boxes, getting all that stuff ready. And here are all of our boxes that will be going back on top of our hives after we make the splits. A lot of, lot of work in here. And when you manage as many hives as we have, uh, this pile of equipment in, in this room right here, it'll all be out on our boxes. Within three weeks, this building right here is going to be practically empty. Now, underneath this little stack right there, there's some of my uh, double screen dividing boards. And then let me we'll walk over to the cattle room and I'll show you where the rest of our boards are. And as soon as I finish shooting this little bit of video, I'm going to grab the van, get on over here. Start loading up equipment to get our day started. Here's another thing. There you go. There's a stack of double screen boards that I've got ready. I've got a bunch more on the wall right there. It's just a lot of lot of equipment to put on our house. Oh, let me show you this too. So <laughs> here's some some wax bricks here that will be going to Brother Austin for him to use in making the monk soap hand lotion bars. I should have brought this to him before I went to North Carolina, but I never got around time to it. So I'll get this stuff over to him today. So there's the stuff that I've been doing and what I'm getting ready to do. Charlie should be here any minute now. And when he's here, I'll get we'll get all this stuff loaded up and head out to our first B yard. I think we're gonna start out at the St. John's yard and Move on from there. So we're gonna pick this video up, up at our St. John's yard. See y'all in a little bit. What is a double screen dividing board? And here's the ones that I make up. And what it is, simply a board that's going to fit on our boxes, in between our boxes. And what you can see is that on this side of it, there's a screen on this side on the other side, there's a screen on it this side. And then we have a, a cutout right here for an entrance for, for the hives. And it's made out of three quarter inch plywood. And that's really the, the trick about the screen board because when we take a screen board and we place it between the hive bodies, the, the smell, the pheromone of the queen is still there. And when we, put the dividing board in between the boxes, we separate those two boxes. And because you have three quarters of an inch material and screen on both the top and the bottom of it, you create a separation in that hive as well. So the pheromone is being shared during the whole time. The bees, because they can't touch, because they don't, that, that separation, they can't touch, the box that does not have a queen in it, um, if given the opportunity of a larva that's young enough for them to make an emergency cell, they will almost immediately, because they can't touch their queen, they are going to start and draw out an emergency cell. And that's all this board is. It's so simple to use this thing. And we are hopefully getting ready to demonstrate that process real soon. Now, the other, the other thing, like I said earlier, the other thing that I'll be, other method I'll be using to make the splits is using swarm cells. And because we are so late in the year um, doing this job, because usually we start right at the end of March, that I, I really suspect that we're going to find a lot of 
swarm cells already in our boxes, which we will then use to make our splits. And the reason, the reason I love using swarm cells to make a split is because when we put our dividing board in between those boxes and the, the bees draw out a cell, it takes 10 days for that. It's actually 16 days from the time laid to the time of emerging for a queen, but we don't know exactly how many days in this. So it's roughly 10 days from after we put this board in there that we're going to have a queen coming out. And if I can take an emerge, uh, a, a swarm cell and put it in that box and not put a, a double screen divide board between them, I just saved myself 10 days. And when it comes to honey production, 10 days is a lot considering that our honey flow is really only a six week uh, term. So uh, 10 days in six weeks is 42 days, 10 days saving on 42, that is a big difference. So we want to get our queen cells in our queen less box as fast as possible. So a swarm cell for me is a great method of doing it. However, if there aren't swarm cells present for me to do it, we are going to drop the dividing board in it. So we're up here at our St. John's yard. Charlie's got the smoker lit. Charlie, you want to get in here and make sure that show show everybody that you're here. He is here. See? I, I had to get up early this morning. You know, we had a time change this weekend and uh, my body's just not accustomed to, you know, at least an hour earlier. But what Charlie likes about that hour early, that means he gets to go eat lunch an hour early. So he's, he's that's that's really the only thing that he came here for. No, I hadn't thought about that until <laughs> you just mentioned it. Yeah, right, right. I feel right. it coming on. <laughs> so we're going to get over there and, and start showing you how we do this thing. Come on, Charlie. One of the things that I, I, I've learned over the years uh, from, actually over the last two years, from when I when I open up boxes because I go in our boxes so seldomly uh, I never inspect I don't treat so it's rare for me to go in the boxes when when we set up our hives out here we set them up we give them space and that's it I don't come back and inspect hives and because of that reason the bees are able to corral the beetles generally up in the very top of the box and what they like to do is corral them on the top of the frames in this top box and then they propolize around the beetles creating these corrals and what I've learned is that if I go and pop my inner cover off of, let me take the lid off and show you, if I pop my inner cover off of here I will then release all of the beetles that are trapped underneath here so this is, this is the sign that I look for. When I open up a box that I think is going to be ready to be split, this is what I want to see. Because if I see bees up in my top box overspilling the, the hole right here, this box is ready to either, it's either got swarm cells in it or it's large enough to, um, to split. One of the, the, the main criteria that I, I go off of um, to decide whether a hive is large enough to split is I count the number of bees on frames. How many frames of bees, how many frames in the box have bees on them? And for me to, to use the double screen board, I want minimally, I want six frames of bees. I like to have eight frames, eight would be better, but six is, is acceptable. Um, and so if you have eight frames of bees in your top box, eight frames of bees in your bottom box, there's a good chance at that point that you already have swarm cells in the box. But there's also a chance that they haven't reached that point where they're creating them. And so what I do, um, I will then split these two boxes and I do not remove the inner cover right here because that's where the beetles are. So I just simply split the, um, put my hive tool in and lift the box up and then I start counting frames or looking for um, swarm cells. Now, a very, very, very useful tool that I have used and, and use all the time 
is what I affectionately call my prison shank. And that name was given <laughs> to this tool by the 628 Dirt Rooster because he had never seen one before. And when he when I, I gave him one, he goes, oh, what's that, a prison shank? And he goes, toot, 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 like that. So this is now the prison shank. And, and interestingly, when I, was, when I was in North Carolina this weekend, and I talked about the, the shank up there, it's actually on one of the slide presentations, there was a fellow, one of the vendors out in the, uh, in the area, the vendor yard, that was selling these things that he had made on a uh, CNC. And when after I showed the tool, they completely sold out of those things right after that. Right at that presentation, they sold them. It's a very useful tool, and, and I know these things are hard to find. Charlie, get a good shot of that for, the, for those that want to copy the dimensions of it and then make one of these for themselves. So this tool, how I use this tool is I use it because the frames in the top box and then the frames in the bottom box are generally connected by bridge comb between them. And we collect that bridge comb, but that bridge comb will I'll, um, take the frames in this bottom box and start pulling them up and then you won't even be able to separate your top box right here. So this tool is inserted and you'll see me do it. It's inserted in this in the crack that I'll create and then it will hold the boxes in the notch, this top box and this bottom box and then I can take my hard tool and start popping the frames off. So this is a great, great, great tool to use. So we know that we've got we know that we have enough bees in this box to make a split, whether we're going to have swarm cells in it or whether we had a drop of board in it, we don't know yet. But let's find out right now. So I'm going to get the smoker going because it's still right around 50 degrees right now, probably about 49, 50. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of bees that are going to want to come out of here. And I'm gonna kind of slow them down with that with that smoke. So I slide the tool in there, and at that now I can put smoke in there. Now there, none of the frames stuck on this one, but you see how it holds the box in place. And if, if there were frames attached, I could stick the tool in there and walk down it and pop them off. All right, so let's lift up this box and see what we're looking like. Now look at that smell. There you go. And look at this right here. Look at that beautiful swarm cell. Unfortunately, we tore it. We ruptured it. So this one is no good. So that queen, that queen is probably, I don't know, she's probably six days old right there. And that, that is what happens very often when you separate the box that you will tear your cells, but sometimes you don't. And you can see we have other cells right there. So let me smoke these bees and, and drive them down and see what else we got on this box. Now this box is a perfect candidate for a screen, screen board because we, we tore our, our cell, we got cups. So what I need to do is scrape away all of these cells that are forming and clean off the bridge comb right here and that will give me space so that I can put on my double screen board. So let me do that right now. What I'm going to do is simply use my hot tool and scrape any of these cups that are being formed. It 
kills me, it pains me to have to get rid of that queen star because I would have loved to put her down there. But that's the way it goes. Clean off all this stuff. Any cups? If you wanted to really be thorough, and I'm not, I'm not that concerned. You could go through frame by frame, but I'm, I, I want to. I've done this enough where I feel very confident that even if there is a que uh, another queen cell, a, a swarm cell in there, and the queen is up there, they'll fight it out and they'll 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 work it out themselves. So at this point, all I'm going to do is move this box over and now I'll smoke the bees down clean off this trash this this is I'll use this opportunity in this bridge comb to check for mites on the drones that are in here and there aren't that many drones on this one because there isn't a lot of uh, bridge comb but I see no mites on any of these but we do have a drone right there so we're going to clean this off ready to drop on everywhere. When I put the board on it, all we have to make sure of is that our entrance is now going to be opposite of the entrance on this bottom board. So this is going to create a new entrance for this box right here. And any of the the field bees that are in this box right here, when they come out of this box, they're going to go around and go back into the original hive right there. The number in this box should, should decrease slightly, and all that really should be here in just a few days are just the hive bees. And now I simply take my top box, and place it on top of the screen board. Get it all squared up. And we have just done the first part of our split. Now this, this will remain this way. Today is the 11th, so next Monday, Charlie and I will come out here, and we will at that point um, take our top box, which I always make the assumption that our queen is in the top box at this point. Uh, last year when, when I did it 90% of the time, and we did over about 80 splits last year, 90% of the time our queen was in the top box. Now, I, I like to have the queen in the top of the box because what I do is when I come back in a week and I find emergency cells in the box, then the top box will then be moved off of this location and put somewhere else in this stand right here. And any hive bees that were using this spot right here for the entrance, they're going to come back and want to go to that spot. So we throw a super on top of that with a stick and they're able to go in it. But these bees that are emerging, these, these one likely are field bees. They're going to come out and they're going to circle around and go right back out into the front. Now, if by chance, when we did the split and we, we did not find emergency cells either in the top box or the bottom box, and that would be due to the fact that there weren't larvae in, in that box uh, young enough for the bees to produce a queen cell, we can then pull the, the double screen dividing, but pull it out and rejoin the box because remember the bees are sharing the same pheromone and then I can come back a week later and try it once again. So this is the method that I use to 
make splits using this double screen dividing board. And we're going to be going through all of our yards, hope, well, probably get about three of our yards done today uh, using this method. And the other one, which we'll film a little bit when we get a swarm cell, how I use a swarm cell to make a split. So we're gonna go through our boxes, do the same process. If we've got one that we find with swarm cells, then we're gonna go ahead and show you how I do a swarm cell. So Charlie, let's find a box with a swarm cell. When I come across a queen cell, a swarm cell um, on these boxes, I use my, my filet knife and I actually cut the wood of the frame, uh, slicing it above it. And that way I take the cell off of the wood and hopefully not rupturing it. And there you go. That is an intact swarm cell. It ain't much of one. So I'm going to take, cut these off as well. I can't, I looked in there, I couldn't see whether we had larva in there, but there's royal jelly in all three of these. So I'm going to remove these as well, and we're going to put them all on a frame. Now that I've removed the cells, I'm going to go ahead and clean off all these other ones. Very often, the question is asked, how far away do I have to put my new box? And you could put it right next door to it, but in this case, I'm just gonna move it down two or three spots and we'll, we'll put our old queen, I'm making the assumption that our old queen's in there, but we're gonna move it here. And then we'll mark it as the old queen. And when we come back uh, next week, we'll go through this and make sure um, open that box, see if we got emergency cells in it. If we do, then we have our queen in that one, and we did the split on that one. So now we're going to move this box right on top of that board. There you go. All we got to do is put our cover on it. And we are going to mark this box as our old queen box. And I'll show you how to do that. To mark the, to mark the different boxes, I use tape. And typically I, I, I like using blue tape to signify my old queen. So I just take my blue tape, just a little piece of it, and stick it on here. And this way, I know that I'm going to have, supposed to have my old queen in here. And I'll get over there and we'll show you what I used on that part. Here are our cells that we need to move down into our box. And this is the method that that I use, and it's pretty pretty successful. So I like to, I like using a frame that's in the center of the box because it generally has a lot of bees on it. In this case, we got some old broom right there. And what I do is. I take my hive tool and I scratch an area of the 
frame about the distance of my tool and then I'll take my cells and push them into it like that and then for extra measure put a little bit of wax over it to keep it really sealed in so that one's done and let me put these three in there as well And that's it. And that's how I do it. And hopefully, if we do have larva or eggs in there, they'll be able to fix these things up. But we definitely have one good one in there. And then we're just going to put this right back in it. And I'll mark this frame so that I'll know to look on this frame to see. And then mark the box. For our new queens, I'm using yellow this year. So I marked the frame that I put her on. And then on the lid itself, I'll put a, a yellow stripe there. So when I come back next week and I look at this box, I know I've got, supposed to have a, a new queen in this box. When we open up, we find our tape, look at our cell. And that's how we've done it. So we got one more to go. So we've done all of them. So let's see. We got a board here. This box never was split. And since it's never been split, I've got orange tape on this one. This box, we have a double board inside of it. This box, another double board. Here's our split using a cell. Here's our old queen. And this one, this box, double board. This box, we didn't split at all. It wasn't ready to get split. Here's our, our split from, from the, and our queen down at that end. And then we just did the split on this one. Our, our new queen, hopefully in here. And our old queen in there. Charlie, I think that that should wrap that up. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna move over to our next yard because he's he, I see you bouncing on that camera. <laughs> and we'll go through as many as we can today. And at the end of the day, we'll give you a count of what we got. So we'll see y'all in a couple hours. I hate beekeeping, man. Such a chore. All right. So it was. Um, let's see. We started right around 8:30 this morning. Trying to uh, get this thing done. It's now 3.30 right yep. now. Yep. So 30, 9, 30, 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 31, 32, 30. Got enough fingers? Seven hours. Seven, <laughs> seven, seven hours. Seven hours. And Charlie has not eaten lunch and he hasn't complained once. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> so in seven hours, according to the numbers here, we went through 43 boxes. Um, and out of those 43, 20 of them... We used a double screen dividing board on it. Eleven of them, uh, we found swarm cells that we could put in there. And 13 of them just weren't ready yet to even have the board put in them. And so those, out of those 13, we're probably going to be lucky if half of those are developed enough even to split. But it's okay if, if we don't split them because it's just okay. So that's not bad. 43 43 highs in seven hours, and we had to travel. We, we, yeah, we had a detour. Charlie Charlie told me to go down the Isabel Swamp Road, and I said, well, Charlie, that water's kind of high. And he goes, no, we can make it, and we got halfway through it, and, and man, we would have water in the van. Don't believe him. It's not true. <laughs> so we had to back up two miles. I didn't want to swim. <laughs> and turn around, get to high ground and turn around. And go all the way around. And then we had to come all the way back around. So we probably we probably spent an hour and a half driving today. Yeah, yeah. So that but seven that, hours. That's good. I mean, yeah. that's, we did good. Yeah, pretty good. 
Yeah. Um, uh, Charlie took a couple of hits. One right on the tip of the nose. I don't know how many I took. But anyway, it was it, it wasn't bad. We, we did three yards. So these three yards, I won't have to revisit for another week. And tomorrow will, will be another day. So that's all I have for, for this one. But wait a minute. That's not all I have. That's right. We've got some shout outs. Yeah. So so it's been a while since I did a, a, a new membership shout out. And, and so these are the people since the last time I did a shout out that have now become members on my channel. And so the members on the channel, they receive a couple of perks, uh, little extra things. One, you get your name shouted out. Uh, the second one is that you get to watch the um, the videos before everybody else. So generally it's either on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll post the videos for members to watch the video. That's going to be playing on Friday. They get to watch it. And then, and then the third benefit really is, is that occasionally once a month or so, or, or about that, I, I will post a, a members only video. So for those three little advantages, they, the, the people, um, all these members, all my members, have uh, they, they send me $4.99 a month. Now, that is a, uh, you, you can cancel that at any time, right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, you can cancel that at any time or whatever, and it's a, it's a reoccurring charge. It'll just be put on your credit card. But we've got a couple of uh, uh, new names that we'd like to shout out. So you got your glasses? Or yeah, can, you, Jared Doucette. All right. Oh, he's got to be a Cajun. Jared gotta Doucette. Be. And we got Rex Bevins. Uh-huh. Oh, I, w I was in the military with a Bevins. Ah. Gene Foster uh -huh. and Steve Amos. Amos? He said Amos. 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 Okay. And um, Rachel, Rachel Stone. Stone. She, she, she is a reoccurring. She, somehow she got off of it and now she joined back up again. So thank you, Rachel. Oh, okay. And Donald Lane? Lane, yeah. Okay. And so this, this dream with Anna, I, I, when I was in St. Louis, uh, no, this, when I was in, in Tulsa, um, Dream with Anna and Buck Haney, who are the other two members, they they uh, they were there, they hear, heard my presentation, <laughs> and so they became members, yeah, and we got two we got more. Robert O'Hare and uh, Ricky Yeldell. Ricky Yeldell. Yeldell, Yeldell, Yeldell. Yeldell. So, <laughs> so those, are, those are our new members, and, and, and I... I, I'd like for you to consider becoming a member. It's not op, It's not. Uh, it is optional. It's not mandatory. If you don't become a member, you still get to receive the the um, videos at no cost. And every week, I'm still posting them. Yeah, so, we put all the names in a hat uh, for a, a million dollar prize. Now that's a lie, right there. <laughs> you can tell when Charlie is hungry. He starts lying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Charlie, it's time for us to go back to the Abbey. I think it's time to go back. We had a great time today. Everything worked out good. Yeah. Only had one sting. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. Oh, before we go, oh. I have to show you something. I know some new beekeepers will appreciate this. Honeybees have to have water. And there's one little water hole here, and I want to show you this. Okay. Stand by. Look at these girls. They're all collecting water. How about that? All right. No, you know, Charlie, I, I just realized something. What's that? That um, you just like them honeybees. You like drinking that old dirty ditch water yourself. Well, look, when you when you when you're dry and there's dust coming now out of your would, mouth, you got that would be a good do. thing to catch on the video. Charlie laying down on the ground sucking up ditch water. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless. Who are you? I'm Good Time Charlie. And I'm Mr. Ed, and we're out of here until the next video. God bless everybody. Thank you all. <laughs>